be just led of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, just flow. So I'm going to flow. People need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And there's not a day that can, we can go through without Jesus. We need him every second of the day, every minute of the day. We have to be reminded about Jesus because if we're not staying focused on Jesus, we have an enemy who distracts us and pulls us back. He tries to pull us back to our old ways, our old selves. He, he causes us to be angry. He said, can you believe that they did that to you? Can you believe they look, gave you that look? You need to do something about it. You need to do something about it. But you know what? The more Jesus we have in us, the more control we have, the more desire we have to do the right thing, to turn the cheek, other cheek, to say, you know what? I'm not taking the bait. And so... You know, I'm seeing these young kids being prosecuted for murder that they're going to spend their whole life in prison and not have a future, that they could have had a future because, you know, the Lord has, there's a purpose for everybody on this earth. God has a purpose for you and he has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for those young people. He has a purpose for the older people. He has a purpose for everybody. But you know what? The main purpose we must have is Jesus. Are you with me this morning? And so, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? And once you realize who Jesus is, then it isn't a struggle to honor him or to serve him or to have a relationship with him. You want to. And, and I said this before that, you know, when I came out of the world into this church, I was sick of that stuff. And I remember every weekend I said, I'm going to go back to church or I'm going to go to church. You know, I didn't grow up in church. And so I said, I'm going to go to church. I'm tired of this stuff. And then I walked through the doors about 30 years ago. I was at a different location. And I realized, wow, this is what church is about. This is what church is. I didn't grow up in church. And then I began to feel his presence, and, and I began to, the, the process of changing from glory to glory, the old me was fading away, and the new me was becoming more and more evident. But I have to remind myself that I must stay in Jesus. I must keep focus in Jesus, because it's easy to wander, it's easy to get that bad attitude. It's easy to say stuff you shouldn't say, right? That's usually, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, you can tell by how much time you're spending with the Lord by your mouth. What you say. And it doesn't always have to be a curse word. It could be words of lack of faith, a murmuring, complaining. And, and getting caught up, murmuring, complaining is contagious. When you get around people who complain, it's contagious, and you begin to complain. But you know what? I want to remind us that what happened to the Israelites when they murmured and complained? They stayed in the desert for 40 years. God was giving them the land, and yet they complained about everything. Man, Moses, talk about having grace. I mean, having a million and something people, and they're complaining and griping, and you give them all these things, and it was never good enough. But you know what? We're growing up in the Lord. Can you say amen? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Now, I'm here to say I'm not here to judge anybody. You know, and I'm talking about all these things earlier. I'm saying we're better than that. Are you with me this morning? You're better than that. God has so much for us, but it's our mouth and our attitude that gets in the way most of the time. And our lack of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. And, and I believe the Lord wants me to focus on ministering specifically about Jesus. Who is Jesus? And so Matthew chapter 3, let's go there, verse 13. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you that it will accomplish its purpose. I thank you, Lord, that you're changing us from glory to glory, that your word is alive. It's coming, getting into us. It's building us up. It's causing us to let go of the stuff that gets in the way, the stuff that brings us down, the stuff that 
fogs up our, our vision of you, Lord, and our relationship with you. I thank you that the word today is going to cause a change to take place in our lives and cause us to wake up and, and, and get into the race and begin to run this good race that you have for us, Lord. So I want to just stay out of the way so that you can have your way today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, and again, the title of this is, Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Hallelujah. In verse 13, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized, baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? See, Jesus had a plan, and that's why he went to John. You know, Jesus comes to you every single day. Do you know that? He comes to me every single day, and he's asking us to do things. Well, and sometimes we'll ignore him. Sometimes we'll be distracted where we, we quote, unquote, don't hear him. But he's talking to us every single day by saying, I need you to do this and do that. And, you know, and so when I, when I went and chatted with that young man, I'm very careful because sometimes there's motives behind what people do. And so I have to be very guarded. And I believe it's wise as well being on this property. You know, I've had all kinds of things happen since I've lived on this property. And I have to be on my guard. I have to watch out for things. I, you know, I remember when I first moved on this property years ago, over 20 years ago, you all remember, across the street we had a drug house and we had a gang house and people would be walking to the parking lot and people would be kind of shooting at them, going to your car, going to church and being shot at. And uh, I remember that during the night there'd be the reds and the blues, gang people out there, and they'd be fighting behind my house. To be, you know, doing all these kind of things. But you know what? We brought the glory of God here at 411 Southwest Moreland Road. Things have changed. You can look across the street and see change. There's no drug house across the street. There's no gang house. Everything's changing, and it's looking better and better here in Oak Cliff, which they used to call the hood. <laughs> People say, I, where do you live? I say, I'm in Oak Cliff. And they say, oh, the hood. No. It's where the glory of God uh, resides. But you know what? You take the glory wherever you go. Can you say amen? amen? So as I have to be guarded and be careful, but you know, there was something different about this young man. He was very open. He, and again, I'll never forget the expression on his face like, really? You want to give me something? You really? You know what they had told me? That... He doesn't get that very often, that somebody cares about him. Maybe a parent doesn't even care about him. He didn't have any family. He's a young person living on the street. There's people out there that are lonely. There's people out there that have been kicked out of the church, kicked out of a family, kicked out of a community, whatever it is. There's people out there that are wandering around looking for hope. But you know what? Christ in you, the hope of glory, that you can give somebody some hope. But you have to know who Jesus is. How can you give something to somebody without you knowing who it is? So I'm believing today the Holy Spirit is going to reveal more of who Jesus is to you. So when people ask you about Jesus, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will give you the answer to give them. It'll be specific for their need, for them at their level. Can you say amen? So he says, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me, John said. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And you know what he's saying here? He says, remember, Jesus came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Jesus was the only one who could fulfill the law. And he fulfilled the law. And he's saying, I must be baptized to finish what I was sent here to do. Let's go on. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So God the Father spoke out as John was baptizing Jesus. Jesus coming out of the water. The Holy Spirit was coming down. And upon Jesus, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son. Jesus is the Son of God. And through Scripture, it reveals who Jesus is. You, the reason why I accepted Jesus, I didn't go to church. Remember, I didn't grow up in church. I wasn't taught about Jesus until the neighbors took me to church and the preacher's wife asked me if I wanted to give my heart to Jesus. And something inside me, who could that be? The Holy Spirit said, yes. I didn't know who he was, but the Spirit of God was drawing me to Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are people out there, they're waiting for the Jesus in you to show up and ask them, do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? They don't have a clue who he is, but Jesus in you, the Spirit of Christ in you, is drawing the Spirit of Christ out there, drawing people to Jesus, and they're just waiting for Jesus to show up or for somebody to invite them to Jesus. And that's what the preacher's wife did. She invited me to Jesus, and I accepted the invitation. And I'm so glad I did. And I went to church for a couple months, and then my parents got in an argument with the neighborhood kids' parents, and I couldn't go to church anymore. And it wasn't until I was 29 years old I came to this church. But I had Jesus in me. And when I was doing all my wild things, Jesus in me was saying, he was, oh, thank you for Jesus. Kept me safe of all the crazy things I did. You know why? Because he had a plan for my life. And you know what? The devil had lost me on that day when I gave my heart to Jesus. I was bought with a price. I had been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I may not have been living for Jesus all those years, but I was his because I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. The same for those right now watching. You once had a relationship with Jesus, and Jesus is calling you back into that relationship. You didn't lose Jesus. You're just missing out in that relationship with Jesus. So as Jesus comes out of the water, the voice from heaven says, this is my son. So who is Jesus? The son of God. When somebody says, who's Jesus? He's the Son of God. That's who Jesus is. Well, let's go to John chapter 1. Is it okay if we go on a journey this morning? I want Jesus to speak to us. You know, as I began the message this morning, I could feel the Holy Spirit saying, I could feel him saying, nope, you're not going there. Did you notice that? I wanted to say some other things. And the Lord said, no, I want you to speak about me. I want you to speak about Jesus. The Holy Spirit was sent to speak, remind us of what Jesus said. We got to start talking about what Jesus says. Stop talking about what other people say that they think Jesus said. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You can't count on your mother and your grandmother's relationship with Jesus. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You are the vessel for now for Jesus to use to speak to other people. Well, I'm going to call Pastor Tony on the phone, ask him to speak to somebody and tell him about Jesus. No, I'm equipping you. That was the word earlier. I'm, I'm training you. Jesus came on this earth to train the disciples to do the work that he began. And y'all, we are being trained to do the work that the generation did before us and the generation did before them and them and them because Jesus had trained them from generation to generation. And I have to say, church is so different than years ago. Anybody say amen to that? 
Church is different, y'all. People are different. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> that's the Holy Ghost. See, see, I have the Holy Spirit saying, I told you, I want you to talk about me. Don't get in all that other stuff. See, you're going to learn from my stuff today. This is how the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will stop you in your tracks when you begin to start judging somebody or start saying something you shouldn't say. Well, let's go on. <laughs> okay, Holy Spirit, I'm getting it. John chapter 1, verse 29. Lord, you're really going to do this, aren't you? You're going to use me <laughs> as a training ground. John 1, 29 says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So who is Jesus? John said, He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So I'm giving you some things to say to those people who are asking about Jesus. He's the Son of God, but also he's the Lamb of God. Remember, they would sacrifice animals. The priest would take the animals to the altar and sacrifice them as uh, an offering unto the Lord to cover the sins of the people. But Jesus is the ultimate sacrificial lamb. When his blood was shed, we no longer have to sacrifice animals to cover up the sins. Jesus took away our sins. Not just cover them up, our sins. Once your sin have been forgiven, it says he chooses to put it into the sea of forgetfulness and never remember it again. And you know what we do? We, we go, Jesus, forgive me for this. Forgive me for doing that. Oh, a week later, Jesus, forgive me for doing this. Forgive me. And Jesus is saying, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know why? It's because he put it in the sea of forgetfulness. And you got to, once you ask for forgiveness, you know what? The Bible says repent, change directions, change your mind. Then get back into the race. Get back into serving the Lord. Get back in and in, in worshiping the Lord. Get back into trusting the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? It says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant. When I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. So John came as the messenger, the, 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 the one who cried out, prepare the way of the Lord. His job was to prepare the way of Jesus. Through repentance, right? Repentance. To repent and receive salvation. So John is saying that uh, it says, uh, A man comes after me, surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is, and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I have testified that this is a Son of God. So what is John saying? You know what? He had that experience with baptism, didn't he? And then he's testifying of what he saw. We as believers, we are not called to be silent Christians. We are called to testify of what Jesus has done for me, for you. See, what's going on in our world right now, there's not a whole lot of testifying going on about how good Jesus has been to me or to that person. It's all about judgment. It's all about pointing out the wrongs and you've done wrong. You'll never amount to anything. And all things are bad. All things are bad. All things are bad. All things are bad. In Jesus, all things are good. So i got to stay in Jesus. And I'm being reminded, I, I don't know about you, but I'm being ministered to right now to be reminded, I need to get out there and testify how good the Lord has been to me. Now, you hear me on Sundays, you watch me on, on YouTube and, and Facebook Live and all those things, but I got to get out there and have, you know what the Lord's been really speaking to my heart? Friendship evangelism. Friendship evangelism. What is that? 
Well, you don't get on the corner, and you don't yell at people or sing at people. You just talk to them as a friend. Hey, how's it going? And you know what? They'll open up a door for you. And the door is, hey, I'm having a rough day today. Then let me tell you how good the Lord has been to me. I used to be a mess. Or, hey, what's going on? Oh, I know what you mean. I've, I've been there too. And you start talking about how good the Lord has been to you. Rhonda, you can reach somebody I probably can't reach because you know them as a friend. They, they can trust you. You know, I've heard people say, well, I've been trying to get people to come to church and young people to come to church, but they, they're just weird about coming into church. They're afraid to come into church because, you know why? Because they're seeing all this crazy stuff going on in the world. The church is acting all this frantic stuff. And, you know, we've got to be inviting people by our presence and by how we treat people. That will open a door for them to want to come to church. Can you say amen? So testify. John is testifying of what he saw. John is testifying of what the Lord had told him or God had told him would be uh, an example, would be a, a confirmation of who Jesus was. And so he's talking about him to other people. We'll go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 9. And I've read this before and I've taught on it. The woman at the well. Remember, Jesus was tired and he comes to this well and there's this woman who's a Samaritan. And Jesus, obviously being Jewish, he asked her for a drink and she was shocked because he was talking to her. You know what? I just, I can't get that young man's look on his face. He was shocked that I was even talking to him. He's probably been overlooked and looked down at. He's been probably told uh, things to do and not to do. And, you know, I had to tell him, I said, you can't stay on the property because the police look at the property. And I don't want you to get in trouble. And so I would go back to him. I said, are you doing okay? And he was sleeping. And, and, but the look on his face said, wow, you're talking to me? You're talking to me? And there are people out there that you could probably talk to and they'd be shocked because nobody else is talking to them. Nobody's reaching out to them and showing compassion and love. But you can make a difference. You can make a difference. So this woman who was a Samaritan was shocked that Jesus was even talking to him, her. And then it goes on in verse 9. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Man, this is a wonderful story here, isn't it? An outcast. Jesus knew who she was. Jesus had a plan. He showed up at the well at the exact time she was there. And she was probably there by herself because the other women wouldn't have anything to do with her. She was an outcast. Isn't it something Jesus goes to where the outcasts are? The ones that have been thrown to the curb and uh, those who people shun and people look over and people don't have anything to do with them. And it's not a big deal for Jesus. But you know, today Christians are so busy cleaning out the church. We're going to clean it out of all these bad things. But you know what? People come in. I came into this church a mess. I brought a mess into the church, and it was me. And they could have said, hey, we don't want any of your kind in this place. But they didn't. They welcomed me in with open arms. And they, they, they reminded me of who Jesus was, and they began to teach me about Jesus. And, and I began to grow in the Lord, and the Lord began to do these great and mighty things in my life. So I became better and more happier and all these things. And I began to live that life of abundance that Jesus promised that he came here to do. Give us a life that we enjoy to the abundance, the overflow. And so then it goes on. Sir, the woman said in verse 11, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? And drank from it himself, and as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds. 
Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. He was talking about that natural well, that natural water. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life, the Spirit of Christ. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. She was in the natural. But Jesus was okay with that. He was teaching her about the living water. He was teaching her something that she didn't know. He didn't give up on her because she didn't know the answer. He was going to finish explaining the answer. Thank you, Lord. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. You know, here, Jesus is showing her love and compassion. He knows her story, and yet he wants to have a relationship with her. But the other women and the people in the, in the town don't want anything to do with her. But Jesus did. There are people out there that Jesus wants to have a relationship with, and he's waiting for you to introduce them to him, no matter who they are. Stop looking on the outside. Stop looking. God looks at the heart, doesn't he? Aren't you glad he looked at your heart and not your outside? Especially last week when you had that moment. Or the week before. I'm being honest, right? Let's go on. And you know what? The way she receives it, she doesn't receive it in condemnation. She just realizes that he knows about her, and yet he's still talking to her. Let's go on. Our fathers worshiped on the mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we are, must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet... A time is coming and it has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So what is she saying? Well, here's the rules. Here's the stipulations. This is the way we were told we have to do it. If we don't do it that way, then it is not really worship. And Jesus is saying, now is the time that you're going to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You can worship him wherever you are. You can worship him in the car. You can worship, worship him at work. You can worship him at Walmart. You can worship him at Walmart. <laughs> Let me say it again. You can worship him at Walmart. <laughs> you know my story. Wherever you are, you can worship him. You can worship him. Let's go on. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. So who is Jesus? The Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's who Jesus is. Let's go on. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Going back down to verse 20, or 39. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. 
They believed in him because of her testimony. Because she talked about what Jesus had revealed to her and what Jesus had done for her. She was telling everybody in the town about this. And they began to believe in him. Can you imagine us talking about you? Not preaching or beating people over the head with the Bible or anything like that or condemning people, but we begin to share the love of Christ. Can you imagine how it will change everything? Everything won't it, Pastor Jan? Everything will change when we decide, you know what, I'm going to reveal Jesus. And you know what you might have to do? I might have to do? We might have to turn off the television. We might have to turn off the news. We might have to turn off some stuff and stop reading some stuff. And I'm not saying be in denial or be ignorant. I'm saying whatever may be tarnishing your way of revealing Christ, we might have to say, you know what? That's messing with me. I better read this and get the word in me so that I can begin to reveal Jesus to everybody around me to the lost, the dying, the hurting, those people that are angry. I'm just saying. So it says, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. Isn't it interesting Remember, the Jews didn't have anything to do with the Samaritans, but they asked Jesus to stay for two days, and he stayed for two days. Well, wait a second. Oh, but everybody on the news says, I can't be doing this. I can't be hanging around these people. I got to do it like this. I got to do it exactly like this. I got to act like this. I got to be like this. You know what? You be like Jesus and the way Jesus wants you to be and stop listening to what everybody else says. Whew. Anybody get anything out of this? I'm getting something out of it. So they asked him, these people that the other Jews wouldn't have anything to do with, Jesus stays with them for two days. Why? Because he wanted to reveal himself to them as he did that woman at the well. She was the door into the Samaritans, into this community. You have a community out there that are waiting for you to enter into their area and reveal who Jesus is. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay for them, with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Many more became believers because of his words. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. So who is Jesus? The Messiah? The Savior of the world? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? These are who, or this is who Jesus is. The Bible says, how will they know unless somebody is sent to minister to them, to preach to them? How lovely are the feet that brings forth good news. How will they know about Jesus unless we share Jesus? Hallelujah. They say, we no longer believe because your testimony. We believe because of his word. We believe because of his word. You can write this down in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Do you know God loves this world? He may not like what's going on in this world, but he loves this world and he loves everybody on this planet. And he desires that they would have a relationship with his son. He loves everybody, even the murderer, even the ones that did horrible things, the ones that are in prison and all that. He wants to have a personal relationship with them. 
So it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Wow. Isn't that good? Jesus didn't come into this world to condemn it, the people in this world. He came to save us. He came to save us. Go to Matthew 16 real quick. Matthew 16, verse 13. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elisha, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. You need to know who Jesus is, everybody. You need to know who he is. Because the Bible says that the enemy can come as an angel of light. He can portray himself as good, of something of God. But when you know Jesus, you begin to realize, hey, wait a second, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't sound right. There's something wrong with this statement. I can tell by the tone. I can tell by the, the, the motive. I can tell there's something not right about this. But what about you, he asked in verse 15. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So who is Jesus? He's the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. Praise God. And I tell you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, will not overcome it. Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was, and Jesus was telling Peter who he was, and how the Lord was going to use him for his glory. And not even the gates of Hades can overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples, do not tell anyone that he was the Christ. And that's a real weird thing, wasn't it? Because he was revealing himself to them, and he wanted to reveal himself to the world. He wanted to make sure that the world had who he really was. There's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and a place for everything. There might be somebody you cross paths with and you think you need to reveal Jesus to him and it may not be the time for it yet. You build that relationship, build that friendship so that then they can receive the gift that you have. I look for open doors. I can tell, even when through the years when I had to confront something, I look for open doors because if I, do something without an anointing on it or whether it's God's timing, it just mess things up, doesn't it? And the same about revealing Jesus. Go to Matthew 27 real quick. We're almost done. Verse 45. Who is Jesus? You know, right before this time, these soldiers had mocked Jesus. They put him in that robe, a purple robe, and they put, they crammed the crown of thorns upon his head, and they mocked him as the king of the Jews. And then they used this club, and they would walk around and beat him in the head. Can you imagine as they circle you with a club and they bash you in the head? One after another after another. Wait a second. I'm the son of God. I've come to save you. Can you imagine us going through that? We would say, wait a second. I'm here to help you, and you're doing this to me? 
And they did these horrible things to him. They spit on him. He's the son of God. He's the lamb that was sent for the forgiveness of our sins. And they were beating him and they were mocking him and they were spitting on him and they were hitting him. They were doing all these things. And then we come to this part. Matthew 27, verse 45. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our sins are being judged. The only time he felt separated from his father because the lamb was being sacrificed to take away the sin of the world. Why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elisha. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar and put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him still. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. Ooh, praise God. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Now, if you weren't a believer after that, I, I'm telling you right now, there ain't no hope for you. <laughs> then it goes on. When the satyrian and those with him were guarding Jesus, or with, were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. I think I'd be a little nervous too. Chances are they were part of the people that were beating him. Then they realize, surely he was the son of God. So who is Jesus? <laughs> Jesus is my savior. Jesus is your savior. Who is Jesus? He's the lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. But who is Jesus? He's your healer, right? Who is Jesus? He's your way maker, isn't he? Who is Jesus? He's my Lord who breaks through for me. Who is Jesus? He's my everything. Who is Jesus? He's my friend. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? The Word of God told us who he was. That's who Jesus is. So today, and we're not going to go any farther in Scripture, but in Acts 1 it says, when you receive the gift from the Father, the Holy Spirit, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth that you will go out and witness about me. Tell people about me. So why am I talking about this? We got a job to get done before Jesus comes back. We got to spread the gospel. We got to share about Jesus. The good news. We are called to spread the good news. Hello, good news. Can anybody say good news? Good news. Not a bad report. All the stuff we're watching is bad, 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 bad. Jesus is good. Jesus went to the Samaritan woman. He went to the outcast. The woman caught in adultery. You know what? He says the one without sin be the first one to throw the stone. And nobody threw a stone at her. They wanted to stone her. And Jesus said, where are the ones that 
accused you. They're gone. Do they? Well, I can, don't condemn you either. He didn't even condemn her. He just said, hey, you're better than that. Leave that life. Jesus loves people. And we need to love people. Love the unlovable. But who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Jesus, thank you for not giving up on us. When we mess up, over and 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 over again you do not give up on us we thank you jesus we praise you jesus we thank you lord that we are on the potter's wheel you are making us and molding us into that vessel that you want us to be and don't you love it in the scripture it says when the potter was molding the, the the vessel it was marred it was messed up he didn't pull it off the potter's wheel and throw it away he just reshaped it into what he wanted it to be even when you mess up he didn't throw you away he just remolds you and he's just gonna remold you and mold you and mold you until you become the vessel that he wants you to be hallelujah you're on the you're in this journey journey. It's a process. But you know what? Don't hold on to yesterday. Don't hold on to the past. Don't hold on to the junk. When Jesus has got bigger and better things for you, can you say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say Jesus is good? Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Ooh, I think I was praying. <laughs> I moved into... I just love Jesus. Does anybody love Jesus? You love Jesus. And I believe today the Holy Spirit is stirring you up to remind you of the love of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands this morning. <laughs> I started one way. Okay, Holy Spirit, keep me on. He said, no, you're doing it. That's what I want you to do. Today, Lord, bless every single person right now with your presence, with your will, with everything that you have for them, that they would be victorious in every area of their life, that they will shine your glory wherever they go. And I thank you that by your stripes that you took upon your back, they have healing and they receive it right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I thank you. Your word says if we draw close to you, you'll draw close to us. And I thank you today. We have crossed over. We are getting closer to you. Every need is met, but not only met, but the Lord says I'm going above and beyond all that you can imagine. He says I'm showing up and showing out in every area of your life then you will know that it's me that's doing it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If there's anybody here today that you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, those watching, today is your day to receive Jesus. Pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. I acknowledge that Jesus is your Son that he is the Lamb of God. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that, you've received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready to go out 
and share how good the Lord is to you. Not that he's only has been good to you, but he's still good to you. And he gets us through each and every day. He goes before us and makes a way where there seems to be no way. As we say goodbye to those who are watching today, be blessed and be a blessing. Go out and share Jesus to those around you. Give somebody a call. Text somebody and tell them how good Jesus is to you. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Hallelujah. We, you've got a big clap offering this morning.